Good morning, North Oregon Baptist Church. Once again, it is great to be in the house of the Lord, and it's great to be with each and every one of you this morning as we continue in worshiping together. Whether we're separated by our homes and our distances is not really uh, what's important. What's important is that you were able to join us this morning. I thank you, and I thank God for your presence this morning. Let us lift our voices up this morning. Hymn number 405 out of the hymnal. You can sing along with us. Have faith in God. God bless you. Amen. 
ahead and our next song and this morning, hymn number 407, it's one we all know, Because He Lives. progressing well and uh, we're thankful for what God's doing in our lives and in the life of the church right now uh, keeping us in the middle of all this storm it's kind of what I want to talk with you about today today we're going to begin a month-long series on hope and I think right now we really need to hear about hope because hope is in short supply uh, during the middle of this pandemic it seems like every day uh, you know you get an encouraging word then it follows up with a discouraging word and uh, we don't we uh, want to make sure we're putting our hope not in the statistics but we put our hope in God who is the source of our hope to begin with so I want us to think about hope and I can think of no more hopeless of a place than a World War II concentration camp uh, where people were held against their will. I recently heard a news report about a man who has a first person experience 
in a concentration camp. And this man lives here in Dallas. Uh, he goes and is part of educating people about the hopelessness and then the hope that happens in that kind of setting. His name is Max Glauman. I've probably mispronounced his name, but then again, I'm from Oklahoma and I mispronounce a lot of things. So uh, I just know that, that he was very inspiring in what he had to say. His whole family was a part of the Holocaust, the time that the Nazis uh, took over Europe and other areas and persecuted and murdered six million Jews. Uh, he was set free on April 23rd, 1945, and has recently celebrated that anniversary. Even in the middle of, of all of this, uh, he celebrated it with people that he knew coming around his house, honking their horns. And uh, he is uh, actually a strong part of the Dallas Holocaust and Civil Rights Museum. And if you go there, you can actually see a presentation of him sharing his story. Uh, he went through this and after this experience uh, came and came to America, served in our armed forces, met his wife and started a large family. And I always get delighted when I hear about that because, you know, Hitler thought he would destroy the people and he didn't. Uh, they went on to live great lives and he educates people in all of these things that happened to him. He spent 14 years going to concentration camps and uh, taking other people who were part of that and people who want to know more about it. He goes to the concentration camp that he was in uh, most of the time and uh, that he was actually liberated from. And in this concentration camp, something unusual I didn't know existed, that there, there is there a place where the ashes, seven tons of ashes of people who were murdered by the Nazis because of the fact that they were Jews. And I just, I, I can't get over that. I also know that, you know, other people were persecuted and murdered in those camps as well, just because they didn't fit into a particular structure of the Nazis and what they believed in. Every time he says that he goes there, he looks at the ashes and he wonders about the owners of those ashes and how many diseases they could have cured. That's so sad to think about people who could have been so useful to us. And uh, while he was there and, and while he was there on the news report, he read through what the, the Jewish people call the Kadesh, which is a prayer, a psalm that they uh, read that mourns those who have died. And uh, it shares just the deep spirit and the deep hurt and loss, but it also turns the person's eyes to God and says, you know, God is still our hope. And so that is what I want to look at today as we're thinking about that. As through this month, we'll be turning to stories about people uh, who found hope in the Bible, the prophecies about hope, and the poems, the psalms, and other poems that talked with us about hope. Hope is a deep part of the Bible, and hope in God is so very, very important, especially in these days. So I would turn you today to Psalm 121. Psalm 121, where it says in these verses, I will lift up my eyes to the mountains from where shall my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to slip he who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun will not smite you by day, 
nor the moon by night. The Lord will protect you from all evil. He will keep your soul. The Lord will guard your going out and your coming in from the time forth and forever. God bless the reading of his word, which is so important to us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your psalm that is a psalm of hope that turns our eyes away from our fears and our eyes to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. As we think on this today, I want us to, to see that this is called a song or a psalm of hope or of a sense. It's what they would say and sing in rounds to each other as they walked from the mountain passes up through the hills to Jerusalem. It was a time where they would sing and sing of the God that they worshipped and of his hope. I will lift my eyes upward to the mountains. I would call on you today to get your eyes off of all the things that are around you and put your eyes up on God. You know, it's very important for us to do that. When they were thinking about this, they were looking to Mount Zion. It was a place where you went in the temple and when you would come through the passes and then the sun would be shining down on the gold and all the beauty of the temple. And they would find in, in all of that joy and the worship of God. I remember when I went to Israel and we came up that, that first morning. We landed very early in the morning and came up through those hills to Jerusalem. And, and the sun was coming up. It was so beautiful. Even without the temple there. But I can imagine with a bright and shiny temple. They were thinking and their eyes were taken off of themselves. And off of the Romans and off of those who were treating them wrong. And turned to God. God wants us to keep our eyes upward. You remember in mountains in the Bible, you remember Mount Carmel in the Bible, where Elijah was calling the people, saying to them, who are you going to worship today? Are you going to worship God of your fathers, God who saw you through all the things that he's seen you through? Or are you going to worship the God of the Baal, the God of these foreign people? And, and he challenged the priest of Baal to call down fire from God on their altar. And they couldn't do it. And then he said, well, maybe your God's asleep or maybe your God's got a problem. And then he waited until they were through and exhausted. And he called and he went up to, to his altar and he poured water on it. And he waited where it would never catch on fire by itself. And he called out to God above the mountains to bring fire down upon the altar. And God did. And then as we think about it, you know, there are mountains that the people went to. Mount Sinai in the Bible. They went and there that Moses met with God and met with God as you would meet from person to person. And he met with God and he heard from God. And God gave him the law that we, we know as the Ten Commandments in the Bible. And then we think about mountains. We think about problems. We think about circumstances. And what does God call us to do? The same thing that he did with the psalmist. I will lift my eyes to the mountains. I will lift my eyes to God. All religions in the world when they think about their gods their gods are not down here and they're not right here the gods of all people are up here and the great and only god is up here so i would encourage you don't look down look up look up to god today because god is your only hope jeremiah points us to this truth in jeremiah 17 5 through 8 where jeremiah says Cursed is the man who trusts in mankind and makes flesh his strength and whose hurt turns away from the Lord. For he will be like a bush in the desert and he will not see when prosperity comes, but will live in stony washes in the wilderness, a land of salt without inhabitant. 
But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose trust is the Lord. For he will be like a tree planted by the water that extends its roots by the stream and will not fear when the heat comes. But its leaves will be green and it will not be anxious in a year of drought nor cease to yield fruit. Folks, we are in a year of drought. Somebody need, you know, I heard somebody say, we need to find the restart button for 2020 and start it all over again. We are in a time of drought and worry and dread. But those who have their foundation in God, they will not dread. They will know that their God is in control. What shall be my help? Where shall it come from? Who will deal with the anxiety? My, my personal relationship. See, I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about a relationship with the living Lord. My help comes from the Lord. Now, a lot of times you think of the word Lord in the Bible and you think of the Hebrew term Adonai, but that's not the word here. The word here in Hebrew is the word that we are familiar with, Jehovah. Or if you were truly Jewish, you would say Yehovah, the eternal one who has existed, who exists now and who will eternally exist. Revelation 22, 13, God says, Jesus saying to us at the end of time, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. I am the beginning and I am the end. See, my trust isn't in something that's empty. People say, well, your trust is in an unseen God. My trust is in a God who existed before I came to earth, exists now, and will exist after I die, when I go to see Him. He is the God who made heaven, and He is the God who made earth. He stands before, outside, and within His creation. He made stars. He made sky. He made the sun. He is the Creator who creates, not from something. See, I, I can make a craft. <laughs> well, kind of. But I can make a craft or somebody can design something or paint something, but they have to have the items brought to them. God does not need that. He is not a magician. He just makes things out of nothing. He creates creation itself. He speaks and it is done. When coronavirus is through, he will say it is through. He is greater than it. Genesis 1 3. Then God said. That's repeated all through creation. God said it and it happened. At any time, in any place, in these days, humans need help. Ours is an unpredictable and an out of the ordinary time. All the help that can be brought is good. And I salute people like Samaritan's Purse and, and the Red Cross and other organizations and the nurses and all the people who are doing amazing things. But I can tell you this, God is the God who brings and empowers all those things. The scriptures here teach in verse 3, the ground is quaking. In verse 6, the sun is burning down on us. In verse 6, the night is fearful. In verse 7, evil stalks us both inside and out. Also in verse 7, death gives us the scent of unknown dread and stirs our hearts to fear. In verse 8, change comes. We don't even like change during normal times. But in these times, change is always evident. 
You know, things change on a daily basis. You hear good news in the morning, bad news in the evening. But my friend, all of these things happen. And in this time, we need to hear the words of Psalms 121. With all those things going on around us, with all that worry and with all that dread, all of these things going on, and we wonder about what we're going to do. But Psalms tells us, and there is another Psalms I want to point you to very quickly. Psalms 56, 3. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Friend, if you don't have that underlined in your Bible and carved in your mirror for you to look at in the morning, you need to get it there. In all this time of fear, what should we fear? Why should we fear and why shouldn't we fear? Well, first of all, in verse 3, surroundings shake, but he is our solid foundation. All of these things go on around us, but we have a God who is more solid and greater than these. Psalms 119, 114, you are my hiding place and my shield. I wait for your word. When I was growing up in Oklahoma, many of you in Texas probably have the same thing. We had what we referred to as a Frady hole. A Frady hole was a cellar in the backyard. So when Gary England came on Channel 9 in Oklahoma City and told us a tornado was coming, we ran and got our Frady hole. Well, friends, I want to encourage you to have a Frady hole. And that Frady hole needs to be God himself. When the storm is blowing, get with God because he will take care of you. Verse 4, people age, grow weary, become exhausted, sick, and even die. But our God neither slumbers nor sleeps. He's never asleep. He is always alert. He is always attentive. He is always awake. He is always alive. He's not up watching any kind of television show. He's not staying up. He's not worn out. He's alive and moving. Paul writes in Romans 15, 13, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Verse 5, He never lets go of us. His hand is always there. He is always our keeper. In the ICU, His hand is there. By the grave side, His hand is there. His hand is always with us. In the dark night, when we wake up in fear, His hand is there. When we open up the envelope and find the message that we don't like, He's there. God is always there with us. He is never separated from us. Even when the storm... Now, He has not told us that we won't experience storms. He has told us that He sees the storm on the horizon as well. And He takes us not around it, but right through the middle of it. He is always there. Always there to take care of us. Always there to point us to hope that is beyond the moment that we will have Him with us. Romans 8. Again, one of the greatest, if, if you're looking for something to study during this time of seclusion, Romans 8 is great to study. I encourage you to study it. I wish I could really put more time to it, to memorizing it. There's so much. It is the really the thick meat of the Word of God. Romans 8, 38 and 39 says, For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. It's amazing, my friend, what a hopeful God we have. 
And I want to turn you to looking to him today and say, God is with us and God will take care of us. When asked, somebody asked Mr. Glauben if he had some good words for what to say when you were at the time in your life when things looked so discouraging you didn't know what to do. One thing he said that I thought was important for us was this. He said, never, 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 four nevers. He said, never give up. Enjoy life and try to treat everybody that you are surrounded with the way you'd like to be treated. This man who went through so much does not have hate in his heart, but uses his experience to talk with others. And you may have never heard of him before, but I guarantee you those who have heard him and have spoke with him are now part of an army of people who are turning people away from hopelessness to hope. We need in this time, in this hour, to provide a voice of hope for ourselves, our families, our friends, our neighbors, and everyone we come into contact with. We need to really believe and trust in the words, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Let's pray. Thank you, God, that you are a God of hope and a God that we can trust in. One that does not slumber, sleep, or run away. Thank you that you are greater and that you will see us through this time. And because of this, we will have a testimony of what you and you alone can do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. What a great message that was delivered this morning. A message of hope. You know, so many of us have been in our homes for weeks now. Some people have chosen to venture out as, as uh, our communities now are starting to open up. And that's a blessing. I think that's to be God's mercy being shown at this point. But I, I got to tell you something that reminded me of Psalm 121, uh, where David was speaking about that. David speaks and says, I look to the mountain." Where does my help come from? Did you notice that Moses had to go up to the mountain to meet God? Moses went to the top of the mountain to receive what we know as the law, the Ten Commandments. Every time where we need to see God, we don't need to look for God on Phil or on Oprah. We don't need to look within our homes. We need to look first inside of us, but then we need to look up. And find God there. His ever presence uh, being around us and with us. He should always be there. We often need to be reminded of that. Uh, again, God is on the mountain. God, that if you want to find your provision. You want to find out where your help comes from. You want to find out who will get rid of my anxiety and my fear. Look to the mountain where God is. Open your heart and your mind this morning to the Word and continue to study, as I will. Uh, again, uh, Romans 8, a great place to be if you want to find out. You want to claim victory in Christ? Read chapter 8. That will certainly help you. Paul filled the whole chapter full of what we like to call meat and potatoes around here in, in our relationship with our Lord. Let us close out this morning and Sunday. God bless you all. Thank you so much for being with North Thurman Baptist Church. Hymn 253, we would just kind of call it the doxology here. God bless you.